Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure update. It's the 7th of February. Um, quite a few updates this week with some really interesting things on the networking, the AI, the intrasite. So we'll go through all of those. New videos this week, again, really continuing on updating the Azure Masterclass. So the storage module with the key focus being on the Azure storage account, all of its capabilities and a lot of things that build on top of that. So we we go through all of that information. So on to what's new on the compute side. So we have the AKS Enhanced Insights. So this is a new experience that's really all built around a new streamlined view that we use when we use Insights. And it is available for both the free and the detailed insights. Remember the detailed insights also uses the Prometheus metrics and logging to get us even more information into our environment. On the networking side, so Azure DNS Public Zone DNS Sec has gone GA. So remember, this is for the public zones. And with DNS Sec, I can enhance the security of the various domain records, the domain names, by protecting them from things like DNS spoofing, and it helps ensure the integrity of your DNS data. So really, some of the key benefits when we think of DNS Sec are you get enhanced security. So it's going to protect you against that DNS spoofing, uh, person in the middle type attacks. It helps ensure the integrity of the records because those DNS responses you're going to get are guaranteed to be authentic and they've not been tampered with in some way. One of the common attacks is to mess around with the DNS records. You go and look up some name and it points you to some bad actor server, which then captures data, authentication tokens, whatever that is. So this helps stop that. And so all of that really builds a trustworthy DNS because you're going to build trust with your users because you have this secure and reliable DNS infrastructure. Azure Front Door supports new origin types in preview. So remember, Azure Front Door is our public-facing global Anycast solution. So remember, Anycast means the IP address associated with the service is available through all of the Microsoft points of presence all over the world. So if I'm a client, I can talk to that closest point of presence. So it's very resilient because there's all these pops around the world and I get a really nice low latency connection. And it's split TCP. So I establish my TCP session to that close point. I establish my TLS session to that close point. Then it serves me up nice chunks of layer seven type workloads. So it's a layer seven balancing solution. So origins, are where it's actually going to talk to on the back end to fetch the content that it then delivers to me. And what's really nice now is those origins can be private link enabled. And specifically, it's private link enabled app gateway, private link enabled API management, and private link enabled container apps that can now be origins for front door premium um, deployments. Remember, the whole point of private link is the particular instance of a service has an IP address in a virtual network now that can only be used by things that have connectivity to that virtual network, and it doesn't have a, a public address that can be spoke to from the public internet. On the database side, so the Azure SQL free database offer has been expanded. So yes, 100,000 vCore seconds per month. This is a SQL serverless database, uh, 32 gigabytes of data, 32 gigabytes of backup storage, but I now get 10 of those per subscription. And this is for the lifetime of the subscription. So this is really good for testing, for learning, for trying out some kind of proof of concept. And I can apply this to an existing SQL database by clicking the apply offer button. Now, obviously, if you hit the limit of that free amount, it will either auto pause or you start paying for that additional use. So you get to control what you want it to do when you hit your free limit. Um, Azure Databricks is now available in New Region, Mexico Central in GA. And Azure Databricks also now supports clean rooms in GA. So think of a clean room as providing a safe environment for collaboration between different organizations, but still maintaining the privacy of each organization's individual data. So the way this works is think of one organization will create this clean room. And they can then invite other organizations as collaborators. 
Now, all of the parties involved can then pick specific tables, volumes, views, and notebooks via delta sharing to bring into that clean room. But the key point here is the different collaborators can't see each other's data. But what they can do is those approved notebooks we put in the clean room can operate over all of the data. And then we can see the output tables generated from those notebooks. So imagine a scenario where different organizations collect data about some entities. And what they would like to do is be able to get a summary of the status of these entities over all their organizations but without sharing the specific details about what their customers have with them. So this solution is a great way to collaborate while maintaining each organization's privacy for the data they have. Azure Monitor Logs simple mode is now GA. So remember Azure Monitor Logs provides a really nice, powerful store for all of your logging data. Think signals is everything these days. So I can bring in all of the signals from Azure systems and Entra and other clouds and on-prem, you name it, I can bring it into this store. And normally we then interact and perform analysis using the Custo query language, KQL. But that requires obviously some knowledge on our part of KQL. Simple mode makes the data more like a spreadsheet. It's a point and click interaction. I just select the table that I want and then I can apply various filters on it. So it's a, a much nicer experience. And they, they are exposing a lot of functionality with that. Azure Data Studio is being retired uh, end of February, 2026, so in a year. And really this is so the development effort can be focused more around VS Code. Now I can take my existing database projects from ADS and open them directly in VS Code without any migration. And additionally, most of the Azure Data Studio extensions are available in VS Code. Now, obviously, if I'm dealing with Microsoft SQL, I will make sure I install the MS SQL extension from the VS Code Marketplace. It could be if I'm using Postgres, will I install the Postgres SQL extension? If I'm using Cosmos, for example, I use the Azure Databases extension. So depending on the specific technology I'm using, there's a particular extension I'll install in VS Code. But Hey, those are just available. Now, if you do find, hey, there's some very specific feature that isn't supported, well then, for example, if it was SQL, maybe I go and use SQL uh, Service Management Studio for that. So the O3 Mini uh, model has been released. So this is really an update. Remember the O model is all about complex reasoning. They have a, an internal chain of thought. So this is an update to the reasoning model that can now tackle those difficult problems. And it also gives you the ability to have some control on how that's working. Now it supports structured outputs, it's very good at math and coding and science. But one of the great things about the O3 mini model is I can actually tell it the amount of that reasoning, the reasoning effort I want it to use. And I can set that as low, medium or high. So that's the time it's gonna spend working on the problem before it goes and gives out its output. So I can say, hey, I just want a quicker answer. So I could do a low reasoning effort or I want a more thorough and complete answer. I'm gonna say, use a high reasoning effort. Now the higher that reasoning effort, the longer the response is gonna take. And also it will use more of those hidden reasoning tokens that you still pay for, but you are in control of how this is going to actually work. Then we have the GPT-40 audio in preview. So this is the latest audio completions model that enables audio generation. And it can really support pretty much any combination of audio and or text in to audio and or text out. For example, it could generate a spoken summary of some text but it has dynamic variation in that voice. So it's not just this very monotone talking, it actually makes it engaging and you wanna to listen to it. If I give it an audio recording, it can detect the sentiment. That might be really useful. Imagine I'm we always phone up a help desk. It says, hey, we record these calls for training purposes. Well, it could listen to those calls and understand the sentiment of the customer and those overall interactions. So, hey, the customer is very happy. Um, this customer hates us and only wants bad things for us. 
so it would be able to detect that. It can be used as an asynchronous voice in, voice out type interactions. So maybe I've got some kind of hands-free operation. I'm talking to something. I give it a command, it goes and does something, and then it could give me a response back. Now, there is also a real-time version. So this is the same underlying model, but it's been optimized for low latency. So think of those real-time audio interactions. So that would be a more conversational uh, type capability. Entra ID now has hard deletions as a protected action. So protected actions, remember, are higher privileged permissions that I can associate with, with an authentication context and then associate that with a conditional access policy. So it can enforce more specific requirements. For example, hey, to be able to do this protected action, I have to be on a privileged access workstation or port, or I've used phishing resistant authentication. And so the hard deletion is normally when I delete an object, it goes to a recycle bin of sorts for 30 days. So I can restore it. Now what I can do is I can go into the deleted items and delete it from there. That's a hard delete. And obviously if I do that, it now can't be restored. With this capability, I could now go in and add that protected action to then go and say, oh, I need additional requirements to be fulfilled before you can go and delete things from deleted items. And this will apply to users, M365 groups and applications. And actually we could jump over and see this really quick. So here I am in my roles and admins area of Entra. I'm looking at protected actions. And the key part now is we have this ability to have the Microsoft directory deleted items delete, and I can now associate that with an authentication context, and then I would go and create conditional access policy for that authentication context to go and lock down additional requirements. So it's really just helps me add in some additional checks and things I want before I can go and do that. Also on Entra, we now have real-time password spray detection. So somebody's just, firing a stack of passwords at an entry identity to try and log in. So what this now does is it detects those password spray attempts in real time. So what that means is it will stop the attacker from ever getting a token in the first place. So instead of a really complicated post spray remediation because they got an account, well now it's going to stop the attack while they're still trying to perform the sign in flow. Now this is part of identity protection, which means it's a P2 feature. And the nice thing here is this will now show because it's real time as a sign in risk, which I could now respond to in my conditional access policies under the sign in risk area. And advisor now has a service retirement workbook in preview. Now, ordinarily in service health alerts, we'll see retirements coming up, but we don't get for those retirement things today, impacted resources. What this does is it will give us the impacted resources. Now, not all services are onboarded today, but the product group are making a lot of efforts around this and I expect it to grow massively over the next couple of months. So I'm in Advisor, I'm looking at workbooks and I have this service retirement workbook. And if I go into this, it actually shows me a few different things, but the first tab is really nice. That it shows me impacted services and it's showing me all the different retirements that it knows about. But if I keep scrolling down, well, it's actually showing me my resources and the specific resource itself that is impacted by this retirement. So I could then actually scroll over. I can see the exact resource name. I can go and select it. It gives me the exact action that I then need to go and take to make it healthy. So this is a really nice place to now go and get resource level information again. Not every service is covered today, but this is definitely growing. There's also the ability to go and just kind of see all services that have had any kind of retirement, and I can see ones that have already retired. So it's a really nice place to go because there are a lot of retirements going on at the moment, mainly because of things like, well, TLS 1.0 and 1.1 are going away. We want TLS 1.2 or above things like the Azure Service Manager, the old red dog front end control plane for Azure, 
that's essentially being unsupported. So I need to move to Azure Resource Manager. So there's a lot of different retirements. So it's really good to not be surprised by those things. So check out your service health alerts. And then for the workload supported and it's growing, go and check out the services retirement workbook in Azure Advisor to get even more details on it. And that was it. As always, I hope this is useful. Until the next video, you take care.